Hi, my name is Craig, aka Drosselmeyer, technical artist at IMVU, and I'm going to show you what a normal map is, how it works, how to make one, and some examples of what can be achieved using normal maps. Using normal maps, you can add fine detail that reacts to lighting in the scene without the need for added detail in the mesh or in the diffuse map. A normal map is a specially generated texture that cannot be easily painted by hand. This is because it uses the red, green, and blue channels of an image to store mathematical data, which is used to alter how light interacts with the surface of an object. Let's explore how a normal map works. Like shininess, a normal map will only work if there are lights in the scene. Without a normal map, when light hits a mesh surface, it bounces based on the normals of the mesh. So what is a normal? A normal is a vector, that is, a group of three numbers which describe a direction in 3D space. This direction is represented by the letters X, Y, and Z. Mesh normals describe the direction the polygons are facing and therefore how light is reflected off of them. Normal maps describe this direction using the red, green, and blue channels of a texture. This means when a normal map is applied to a mesh, the normal map alters how light is reflected off the surface of the mesh for each pixel in the texture. To understand this in greater detail, let's look at how the individual channels operate. Imagine a texture mapped to a plane lying flat in a 3D space, where the width of the texture lies along the x-axis and the height of the texture is on the y-axis. The red channel represents the value of the x-axis of the normal where 100% white, value 255, points all the way to the right and has a value of positive 1 on the x-axis. 100% black, value 0, points all the way to the left and has a value of negative 1 on the x-axis. 50% gray, value 128, points neither left nor right and has a value of 0 on the x-axis. The green channel works the same way but represents the value of the y-axis of the normal. White is positive on the y-axis, black is negative on the y-axis, and 50% gray is zero. But to complete our normal vector, we need one more value to represent the z-axis. The blue channel is just the ticket. Here though, the value is between 100% white, value 255, a z-value of positive one, and 50% gray, value 128, and a z-value of zero. The z-value will never be negative because it is always assumed that the normal will be pointing out from the surface and never in, as that would look weird. When the channels are combined, you have a normal map, that is, an image that describes the direction of surface normals. But how do we make a normal map? There are a few ways to create a normal map, and here we will cover a couple of basic tools, one available in Photoshop and another an online normal map generator. When making a normal map using either Photoshop or the online normal map generator, you start with a grayscale image known as a height map. In a height map, 100% white represents the highest point to be considered, and 100% black as the lowest point, and gray as variation in between. High contrast changes in value will appear as abrupt jumps in height, and smooth gradients as gradual transitions in height. In Photoshop, Take your height map and choose Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. I find that setting Blur to 0, Detail Scale to between 10 and 20%, and leaving the contrast details low, medium, and high at 20% produces the best results. But experiment on your own. If you don't have access to Photoshop, there is a great online normal map generator which can be found here. Simply drag and drop your height map to the height map swatch, adjust the strength and level. I usually leave the blur at zero and then click download. Once you have your normal map, just add it to your product material and click preview. Here is an example of what can be achieved using only a normal map. 